listen, let me tell y'all what I was doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying, so I'm talking and look, I don't, I don't, like I, I will talk and do this if no one's on here. Let me just, let me just be clear, right? I don't need an audience to go live, but here's the thing. I'm going live, I'm talking and I look over cause I can see Facebook. I look over and I see the little lock that I was going live just to me. And I was like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> like what is happening right now? Like how did I set this up private? You know why? Cause when I initially went live, I've been on here y'all since like 9, 9.40. But when I went live, I, I didn't have my glasses on. I think I must've clicked it by accident. I don't know. And and then I didn't know how to change, like I was trying to change the privacy while I was going live and I couldn't do it. So then I had to start all over again. I was like, well, what? I, this is not just meant for just me. I don't mind, I don't mind if none of y'all are on here, but I was like, this isn't meant for just me. All right, so now let me start from the beginning. What the hell? Hi, good morning. Happy Saturday to you. Um, I was saying, I felt like these earrings were too big for Saturday morning. They're like Friday night earrings that I came in on Saturday morning, but I grabbed them and I put them on. So here we are um, on Saturday. So I started talking. I started out, um, man, I can't believe I had that on lock, literally. Like I'm, I'm here talking, I'm talking about the different Claire's and da, da, da. And I look over and I see, it's like, it's, it's the little lock. I'm like, just me, what, what is happening right now? Oh my gosh. All right. Good morning. So this morning I ended up talk, I was talking about being one of the Claire's, Claire sentient, clairvoyant, claircognizant. Um, and then there were some others that I, I didn't even realize existed and talking about being an empath. Um, and the reason, and I was saying the reason why I'm, I'm not, I'm on here like an hour later is because I was listening to M rain this morning and I posted her video uh, on my page, it's below this one, um, because she was really getting into it this morning. She was really, really, and I, normally her lives are an hour and I, I would try to like take time to go back and forth and listen. But this morning I had to listen to the whole thing. So if you have an hour, listen to the whole fucking thing. Cause she's really like this morning was like, I was like, yes. Um, all right. So let me get into it. What I, what I ended up speaking on. Um, by the way, new moon in Scorpio uh, tomorrow. Uh, Mars is direct in Aries. So lots going on, lots going on. I've said before <laughs> that I feel like this is, I'm in a season of fire for me. Like I'm in a season of, of action. And this is what led me into this conversation. So I, I'm not an astrology person. I, I don't know a lot about astrology. Um, I know the basics. Right. And I know, uh, you know, I know, um, I know, I know more about the elements, right? Like I can break down earth, air, fire, water for you. Right. Um, and so then because of that, I, you know, I, when I know that, you know, Sagittarius is fire or Scorpio is water or Libra is air or Virgo is earth, I can break that down based on what I know about the elements, but I don't know things from the astrological point of view. So I feel things. I'm, I'm, Clear sentient is my dominant gift. I feel certain things and then I hear astrologers talk about them and I'm like, oh, okay, yes, that matches. I can't tell you the planetary deal with it, right? But I, I can match it. So I started out saying that and then I, and then I, and so now here we are, now you're all caught up. <laughs> so here's the thing, everyone is an empath. Everyone is clairsentient, claircognizant, clair. I had to go look them up because I couldn't remember the other ones. There's one for clair alliance, clear smelling, clair augustance, clear tasting. Everyone is all of these things. And I wanted to say this because I see this where people, some people might feel like they're special because they're like, you know, I'm, I'm clairvoyant. I see things. You know, and it's like, that's great. I'm clairsentient. The same thing you're seeing, I'm feeling, right? So it doesn't come to me in sight. It comes to me in feeling. Someone else will say, you know, I, I'm clear audience. I hear it. And I'm like, well, that's cool. I'm clear cognizant. That's my secondary gift. I just have a knowing, or it might be the other way around. Or there might be even, right? I it's a knowing that I have. The thing that you hear is the thing that I know, right? It's just, it just comes to me as a knowing. Everyone has that. All of you, all of you, all of you, 
have it. It's just a matter of if you're open to your gift, if you're open to training yourself to be deeper into that gift, if you're open to the possibility of it. Now, I don't, I don't really want to be, I don't want to be clairvoyant, to be honest with you. Um, I know what I feel. I know what I know. I don't know that I want to put a visual to it for me personally. I don't know that I have not reached a space where I feel like I can handle the visual sight of the things that I, that I sometimes feel um, when I'm in a person's presence. You, you get what I'm saying? So sometimes we're given the gift that we can handle that would keep us most sane at the same time. You're all empaths. Everyone is an empath. <laughs> this idea that some people are empathic and others are just not. No. no. This is a way for some people to try and make themselves feel special in the spiritual realm. Uh, we've already been over this. You are direct. You, you, let me see. You are divinity in flesh. You are source energy in flesh. How could you not be empathic? How could you not be clear anything? You are that. Now, whether or not you've chosen to deny that, suppress it, cloak it, uh, opted out of it, decide you don't want to feel those things, you don't want to have that knowing, that's a personal decision. But there's not, there's not a soul in human flesh that's walking up around this planet that does not have access to seeing beyond. Was a, do you guys remember Thundercats? This is one of my favorite cartoons. I actually started watching it again on Netflix. Um, you know, you, you, you have that same thing that Lionel has in the, in the Eye of Thundera, you know, give me sight beyond sight. That's, that's for everybody. That's an everybody gift. It's not special. <laughs> what's, what's special is that some of us are, well, it's not even special. Some people come into this realm with that gift already activated. Some people find it along the way. Um, we can all be mediums. We can all speak to beings in other realms. Like this is not something that only someone else can can do. So let me let me talk about psychics for a minute, because I remember the commercial for Miss Cleo from like the early '90s, and I thought and I thought I, I thought it was funny then. Every once in a while, I would amuse myself by going to a psychic. Now there was one that I went to who happened to be correct in her assessment. Of course, she tried to tell me to come back and bring her $200 or something to cleanse me of something or another. Now that part, no, we're not doing that. Um, she told me to be aware of, of someone with a specific letter and their name. It turns out I ended up with that person. That didn't work out so well, but at the time I didn't know anybody like that. It was it was very strange. I, it's it's, it's it's not in my body to tell that story today. Maybe I'll tell it another day. That's the only psychic that I've ever gone to that I think told me something of some value. Whenever I, I, I whenever I go to a psychic or people who call themselves that, I'm always interested. Like, okay, what do you what do you got for me? And I'm usually sorely disappointed. I'm I'm sorely disappointed. And this is a, I've never called myself a psychic ever. I, I have done readings, I do readings. Um, I'm not like, you know, super, super reader. Um, I've only had one person ever and I've done hundreds of readings. I've only had one person ever tell me no to the reading I gave her. And really that's just because she had resistance to it. Like literally this woman had a lot of resistance to what I told her. She was like, no, you're, you're that's just wrong. That's just, that's just absolutely wrong. That's, we, I can't know. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I wasn't offended. 
<laughs> like it wasn't from me, right? You're psychic too, all of you, all of you, all of you. Because you're, and it's so funny because I didn't mean to, I, I had no plan on this, but it kind of ties into to M's video, which I posted on my page. This, this idea of people constantly running to someone else to get the information so that their life can be fixed. Well, if I go to this psychic and I get this reading, then I'll know what to do. If I, if I go to this clairvoyant person, they can, they can show me the path. If I, if I go, if I go over here, then I'll, I'll, I'll get what I need. And then, and then, and then, and really then I didn't have to do any work and someone else told me what to do. And then I can just go ahead and do that without me having to have to done any work whatsoever. Why would you want to put your, your path in someone else's hands like that? And I'm saying this as someone who does readings. So my readings friends, and I'm not, I don't, I don't do readings for, for cash anymore. It's exhausting. My readings are generally confirmations. I'm that, I'm that person, right? Because no one, no one can tell you your future. No one can tell you your future. They can tell you some things that could possibly take place depending on the path that you might travel. They can give you that information. But there's not a person on this earth I do not care who they say they is that can tell you your future. They can break down parts of your destiny based on your planetary alignments, based on uh, a spirit vibe that they get from you, based on a whole bunch of things. They can probably put together a great composite about what it looks like your purpose destiny may be while you're in this realm. But they can't tell you what's gonna happen a year from now. They can tell you a possibility if you continue on this path, but you can switch it up at any time. And then it's something totally different. So like my readings aren't like, let me tell, and I always tell people, this is not, I'm not telling you your future. And usually what it is, is it's, it's, it's spirit coming like giving me the message to give to them, like, this is just like, you know this, I'm just giving you confirmation on it so that you feel better about it kind of type of thing. The reason why I'm saying that is because everyone is a psychic, a medium, an empath, clairvoyant, clairsentient, claircognizant, all of those things. You are all of those things. You are all of those things. They are not special gifts given to a select few people that then the mundane muggles, you know, have to go to the other people to get the information because they just, they, they, they're, they're not able to do that. No, you can do it. You just might have to put more work in. And there's probably one of those gifts that's coming through you, but you're just not paying any attention to it. So for some people who are clear audience, you hear messages, but you just think, that's, that's crazy. That's, anyway, like I was saying, message coming clearly to you, clearly to you. And you're just like, I don't, I don't know what that is. And then you're like, I think I should go to a psychic. You know, I feel like I need to know something. And it's like, I'm trying to tell you it, right? So everyone has this gift. You have these. I encourage you to develop them for yourself. My nose has been itching and running this morning. Um, I'm not sick. It's just the air when it's winter time and you kind of like close the windows and then it's like it feels like it's stuffy. I have to open my window. Uh, but you, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, because I see people on here, you know, well, I'm an empath. So it's like, yeah, okay. Me too. Like, that's not, it's not a title. <laughs> it's not a specialty. Do people even know what that actually is? Like an empath is someone who like feels, feels things. You feel other people. We, we can all do that. It's just that we live in a society that constantly tells us to shut that off. We're all intuitive. I'm an intuitive. Yes, yes, and me too. 
and you too, and them too, and they too. And I, the reason why this is important is because once you stop seeing those people who say that as, as special and somehow you're not, then you stop trying to give your power to them. And I'm not saying don't get a reading. Sometimes we need confirmation. Sometimes we just we just need a little confidence. It's a confidence booster to me is what a reading is, right? So if I go get a reading from someone, I, I, I know what's happening here. It's like, I'm just, you know, when you go to a friend for advice, to me, that's what a reading is, right? It's like, this is what I feel is happening. I just, I just want to get a little bit of, I just want to get a little bit of confirmation here. Just, I just want to get like a second opinion, you know, you know, on, on the matter, see, you know, what's, what's happening. It's a way to get in touch with spirit. You know, let me just make sure, let me make sure that what's going on here is clear. You know, that's how you, that's how you need to approach a reading. Not, should I stay with this person or not? If you're asking that question, the answer is probably, no, you should not, right? If you're asking the question, you already know the answer. What you're hoping is that somebody will give you permission to stay, okay? You don't need a reading to go, well, should I take this job or not? Right? We're asking people to give us answers to things so that we don't have to take responsibility for the decision that we made. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't, we don't, that's what I'm saying. Like, we don't want to be responsible people. <laughs> that's the, that's the truth of it. And we have to understand the truth of it because once we know that, now we can start doing some work. Like, if you just admit to yourself, yeah, you know what? I don't want to be responsible. I kind of just wish somebody else would make the decisions for me because I'm exhausted and I'm tired. And sometimes my brain is going and I don't want to have to keep trying to figure out what to do and all this other stuff. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to be responsible. Okay, good. So now let's figure out ways to get you responsible in a way that makes sense. But if you walk around thinking that you're being a responsible human being, but let me consult with my tarot cards for the third time to find out if I should still be dating this dude. Really? You needed the cards to tell you what you already felt inside? Like you needed to see it in the, in the cards. You needed to, you know, cause it's a tool by the way. Like the cards aren't telling you anything. The cards are a tool. The candles are a tool. They, 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 they amplify the energy. They don't give you the energy. They don't give you the answers. You are already the conduit. Everything else is feeding off of you. You are the central battery. I need you to understand that before you go get one more crystal, one more yoni egg, one more deck, you are the battery and you are using that tool to amplify your energy. So you don't need the cards to tell you for a fourth time <laughs> that you probably should not be dating this particular person. What you're looking for is permission to be irresponsible. Well, the cards said it was okay for me to date him so I don't understand what happened. I'm so confused. The reader, the psychic told me to take the job. I don't, I don't understand why this isn't working out. I mean, I kind of didn't want to take it, but the psychic said. And the, so the psychic was right because it's a psychic. I'm not a psychic. I mean, I had this intuitive hit, but I'm not a psychic. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> you all have that power within you. Please, please, please stop putting your power in the hands of other people. Please stop letting other people tell you what to do. Stop. Please be responsible for your own decisions. And I, and I, and I swear to you, it's like, I, it's so funny because when I was listening to Em's video, it's like same, but, but different. Cause she was talking about demons and, 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 and the religious stuff. And I'm, I'm on it. I'm for it. And, you know, Initially, I came on here wanting to talk about, you know, the new moon in Scorpio and, you know, sex magic and new beginnings and all that stuff. And I was like, 
And that just didn't feel like it wanted to come <laughs> through me. And all of a sudden we got, you know, I was thinking about the all the different clairs and such. And it's so important to me that you understand that you have free will. Like that was more important than because 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 if I got on here and started talking about the new moon in Scorpio, then you were going to say, well, what do I have to do on this Sunday? Because, and what does that mean for me? You know, and how can I maximize this? And, 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 and what can I do? Because it's the new moon, right? And it, yes, yes. And there's, there's truth to that, right? But can I, let me tell y'all, you can do a manifestation spell while the moon is waning too. You can create, like, don't be a slave to the moon either. <laughs> don't be a slave to anything. There's a natural order to things where you can use those cycles to amplify and to your advantage. But don't think that you can't get rid of or banish things while the moon is growing and you can't create or grow things while the moon is waning. Mm -mm -mm. You can, you can. So don't, don't fall, don't fall. And I, I, I did it too. Like I was in it. I was in it. Like, this is the time when you do this. And I taught it. I taught that you do it during this time. And during this time is when you do that. I taught it. But no, I'm telling y'all now. Yes, you can do that. And, and there's always the end. Do what feels fucking right in, in the moment. It's Friday the 13th yesterday. Do you know I sat right on my bed, a couple of inches back there looking at my vision board wall right in front of me. I sure did engage in some self-pleasure, masturbation, y'all. Sex magic right there on a Friday night. Friday the 13th while the moon was waning. Yes, indeed. And waning, waning, right? Cause like, it's it's like the the, <clears throat> the the new moon is Monday. And some people are like, well, during the dark moon when there's no moon, you should not be doing any of that. No. Spirit was like, this is what we about to do right here, right now in this darkest of dark moment on this day. Yes, absolutely we are. And you know, when I think about it, not only was it Friday the 13th, but it was Friday is generally attributed to, to um, goddess of love, like Venus, Aphrodite, so forth and so on, fertility and manifestation, right? Friday is a day of love. Um, 13 is the number, uh, is, the, is the feminine power number. It's the number of moons that there are in a year. So when you think about all of the other things that were going on, it seemed perfectly perfect for me to do some solo sex magic on a Friday the 13th, even though the moon was waning. The point of it all at the end of the day is don't get caught up in the rigidity of anything. You are the source. You are gifted. You are psychic mediums and all of that. You can read your own cards. <laughs> you can feel into your own intuition. It's all there within you already. I have latent medium mediumship skills. Um, I think I've discussed this before. And as I'm saying this to you, I'm letting you know right now, as I'm saying this to you, my whole, and it's always for me, it's always the back of my spine up into my head. That's, that's what, how things show up with me. I have not wanted to delve into that, but I have no choice but to at this stage in whatever this is that I am working through. Because of where I'm being asked to go, 
is a little further into the dark spaces and to deal with fear. This, is, this has been a thread of fear for me. That's my thread. Some of y'all, it might be a different one. I had a thread of prosperity for a couple of years. Now there's this thread of fear for me that's been happening for the whole of 2020. That that is not that is no longer that is no longer something that I can keep saying. I do not want to explore that because I don't. <laughs> I I me Maisha does not want to explore that. But that is I am not here to serve Maisha. <laughs> All right, you are not here to serve you. So please. Honor your own power. You are all the Claire's. Go look them up. I'll list them. I'll list them after this, once this process is so people kind of know a little bit of what I was talking about. Because I don't know till afterwards and I have to go back and sometimes change the title because I don't know what the fuck. Um, go, go explore them. You already have these gifts that are just in the forefront for you. One of them, two of them. Like I said, mine is clear sentient and clear cognizant. I just, I know things. Freaks my kids out sometimes, it really does. It's not just, it's beyond like logical deduction. Like I know my child, cause I do know my kids, you know? But it's like, I will find shit. I will find, find it. I know where it is. I know when something's not lost. Let me, I'll tell you this quick story and then let me get off. Uh, it was one time when I was at work uh, I was going out to the bank. I had my wallet with me and uh, went to the bathroom, put my wallet on the hook on the door, you know, did my business and washing my hands. You know, I head to the bank, um, get there and I'm like, where's my wallet? And I'm like, holy shit, did I leave it? Cause I'd gone to, I'd gone, this was the second bank. I'd gone to a store, I'd gone to a bank. I'm like, where's my, where's my wallet? Oh my gosh, you know, did I leave it in the other bank? I go back to the other bank. My wallet's not there. And, all, and, and, I, and now human me is starting to panic. And I, I'm telling you all the story because I want you to understand the process of what normally happens to us and how we get caught up. And so we miss the opportunity. So human me starting to panic. I lost my wallet. Oh my God, I got to go cancel my cards. But there's this voice in my head that is telling me, your wallet's not lost. I, it's, it's, it's a small voice and I'm like, that can't be. Like I went to make this deposit for my job. Now I'm going to my bank and I'm like, I gotta get a new card. So I sign up to the thing so I can cancel my card. And there's something telling me your wallet is not lost. I don't wanna believe this voice cause my wallet's not on me. It's not on me. And so I, you know, I say, you know what? I leave the bank. I leave the bank. I leave the bank. I walk back to work, you know, and I'm like, okay, my wallet's not lost. And I feel it in me. Like I feel it in me. It's, I feel my wallet. <laughs> okay. I go back to work. I go back to the floor. I go into the bathroom and my wallet is still hanging on the door of the bathroom stall. Keep in mind at this time, my office was located on the same floor as a probation office, men and women. This, office, this bathroom was a public bathroom. I was gone for 30 to 40 minutes. My wallet was still hanging on the door. I knew, I knew it was not lost. Had I panicked, and listen to human me, I'd have been waiting at the bank to get a new car, to have my card canceled, never would have checked the bathroom. Somebody might've ended up taking my wallet. I have no idea. Thought I would have had to replace my driver's license, everything that was in there because I panicked, because I didn't listen to my intuition and to the voice inside my head And that was, I think the very, that was a couple of years ago. And that was really the very last time that I doubted that. Happened again, by the way, three weeks ago, about three weeks ago, I used my ATM card. And then later on in the evening, I couldn't find it. Now I knew it wasn't lost because I felt it in my body. I felt it in my body. 
but I couldn't find it. And I didn't know where it was, but I knew I didn't leave it like out in the world. Like I know the difference in the feeling and I knew it was in my house. I just didn't know where it was, but I was like, you know what? Just in case I canceled it. I ended up getting a new card. Do you know, I found that shit in another pocket in my wallet. I have put it in another section of my wallet. And that's why I didn't see it where it normally is. But I knew it wasn't lost. These are games that you can play with yourself, by the way. Maybe I'll come on here and I'll talk about some psychic games that you can play that that enhance these abilities. I used to play all the time as a teenager. They were very fun. Um, but there are games you can play. And I'll tell you one now and then, and then I'll go. Um, one game that you can play to enhance your psychic abilities is you can play with a deck of cards. It's, that's one of the simplest, easiest ones to play. You play with a deck of cards. You literally, you take your regular 52 deck and you know you shuffle the deck and you just, you sit there with it, you got your hand on it, you know, you just, if you want to get all technical, your left hand is your receiving. So if you want to receive the, you know, whatever, the, the right hand is the giving, you know, pick a hand, um, pick your dominant hand, you know, I'm left-handed. So I usually use my left hand, whether I'm giving or receiving. Um, put your hand in a car, just really just like, just get connected with it. Just get connected with the deck of cards, shuffle them you know, do all the mixing, put them face down and then pick one, either number, color or, or suit. Number, color or suit and decide which one you're going to go for. So if it's if colors are the easiest to start with, it's, it's, less, it's less specific. I um, mean, also they're usually only black or red. <laughs> and so that's why it's also easier with the suits, it's four. It's a lot more for your brain to process. With the numbers, it's like you got ace through through king. So it's a lot more to process. The colors are easier because you've got two for your brain to kind of begin to, to click in on, right? So you start with your colors. Uh, first card is red. Oh, damn, it's black. Okay, next card is black. Oh, it's just red. And you just keep going through. You keep going through. You practice that every day, five minutes a day. I guarantee you within a 30 days, you will be like, this card is red, ah, red, black, black, red. That's a really simple way for you to begin to explore your own psychic abilities. Okay. All right. I'm going to get out of here because it's Saturday. Saturday, it's Saturday. Um, yeah, just, you know, you are, you are the powerful, you are the powerful one here. Okay. Go be your own psychic. It's okay to get confirmation, but be your own. You've got that in you. Go to other people simply for confirmation, but don't ever go to anyone else to tell you what the fuck to do. Okay. Don't put your life in the hands of someone else. Be responsible and handle the consequences of the responsibility. Damn, that was a fucked up decision I made. Oh shit, okay. You know what, that was a great decision I made. Yes, awesome, go me. It's okay. We all wrong sometimes, all right? I love you all. I'll be back here tomorrow, earlier. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, bye.